you if, you, if, you, if she can answer them uh, in the chat. Um, the next talk is uh, a talk by um, Dr. David Maidman, who um, has, I'm going to see, lose uh, Felicity if we can share that. So David really wanted to be here but he's organizing a conference of his own right now so so that didn't really work so well together but he very kindly um sent us his talk and he is going to talk about a platform uh david is a, a lecturer at loughborough university and his speciality with um, some other people like Rose Daly and Christian Fulgrub it, and Mar Maria Goodwin is in hearing and how that pertains to interaction with digital technology and uh, dementia risk. Um, can you see his talk? I'm assuming that is a yes. Hello, I am Dr. David Maitland, a lecturer in psychology within the School of Sport, Exercise and Health Sciences at Loughborough University. Now, I'm really sorry that I can't be there live at the event today. I'm actually attending another conference in Manchester. But today I'm going to present some research that I completed a couple of years ago when I was working at the University of Nottingham, looking at the power of mobile technologies or ML for short, to enhance hearing loss self-management in older adults. Now, why are we interested in enhancing hearing loss self-management? Well, one of the main reasons is because hearing aid adoption and use is extremely low. So a large proportion of older adults who would benefit from using hearing aids fail to adopt them. And for those that do adopt them, a large number fail to use them regularly. Now, there are a whole host of reasons why this is, this is the case. And I'm showing you here just a selection that have been identified from the literature. So as you can appreciate, this is a very complex and multifaceted issue. Nevertheless, one of the key reasons that hearing aid use and adherence is so poor is because knowledge is very low in the general population with regards to hearing aids and hearing loss. Now, if we, if we look at first-time hearing aid users, for instance, they often experience a lot of difficulties using their hearing aids. And this is because they often struggle to remember or recall all of the information that's been given to them during their hearing aid fitting appointment by a clinician or audiologist. Now, this doesn't only apply to first-time users. So the literature has also shown us that existing hearing aid users, their knowledge is extremely variable ranging from poor to excellent with regard to hearing aid handling. Now, the reason for this is because information typically delivered in clinic is delivered via a verbal means. And this is problematic because often information can be forgotten or retained incorrectly. Now, to combat this, the team in Nottingham developed a series of educational uh, reusable learning objects, or RLOs for short. Now, RLOs are simply put interactive chunks of multimedia that contain uh, animations, video clips, uh, patient testimonials, and a lot more. Now, if you'd like to access these, these are freely uh, available uh, on YouTube via the link I'm showing you on the slide. Now, the videos contained a range of different topics which were prioritised by hearing healthcare professionals and patients. So some of the topics included practical hearing aid handling skills, such as how to insert your hearing aids, hearing aid care and maintenance, as well as psychosocial problems, uh, including communication tactics and acclimatization, so how to get used to hearing through a hearing aid. Now, this was subsequently evaluated by the team and they were shown to be clinically effective. So using a registered randomized control trial design, uh, recruiting 203 first-time hearing aid users, the research showed that those that were given the RLOs at the time of hearing aid fitting demonstrated superior practical hearing aid and handling skills. This is compared to a weightless control who didn't receive the videos. They also demonstrated better knowledge of hearing aids and communication, greater hearing aid use, particularly in those that didn't report wearing their hearing aids all of the time, and also improved confidence or self-efficacy for using hearing aids. 
And if you'd like to access any of these resources, again, they're also freely available on a dedicated website, c2hereonline.com. Now, critically, there are some limitations to the original RLOs, which we subsequently branded c 2 here. Now, they were originally developed for a DVD-based platform because at the time of development, which was almost a decade ago now, we found that internet use in, uh, in first-time hearing aid users was rather low. Uh, in addition to this, the opportunities for individualization and interactivity were rather limited, again, because of this DVD-based platform. Furthermore, the average length of these videos was approximately eight minutes. And for some who took part in the original trial, this was too long and actually hindered them being able to locate the desired information with ease. And again, as I've mentioned, there were limited opportunities to actively engage with the content during learning. And research has shown that active engagement and interactivity with learning materials can actually enhance learning potential and subsequent retention and recall of that information. So as a possible way of addressing some of these limitations, we turned to mobile technologies as a potential intervention. Now, mobile technologies, or mHealth, which refers to the delivery of healthcare via mobile technologies such as smartphones, tablets, uh, PCs and computers, for instance, um, have shown that these types of technology uh, can enable greater individualization and interactivity, which I mentioned earlier can actually enhance learning potential. Now, critically, uh, when we were developing this research in the late uh, 2010s, so around 2017, 2018, smartphones, particularly in older adults, were becoming ubiquitous. And what we mean by that is that they were becoming everywhere. So we were finding that a large number of older adults uh, who were using hearing aids for the first time owned or had access to smartphone technologies. Therefore, we assume that opportunities for using MHealth to deliver hearing health care and education are increasing year on year. So to this end, we developed a further resource which we termed M to Hear. And if you're interested in looking at the development process, it's recently been published in the International Journal of Audiology. Now, we took two steps to developing m to hear So based on the original c to hear intervention, we identified active ingredients that facilitated the intended target behaviour, which was hearing aid use. And this was theoretic theoretically grounded using a contemporary model from health behaviour change, the COMBI uh, model, and accompanying theoretical debates framework. Now, in the development process, this was also supplemented by using an iterative, user-centered and participatory design approach, where we developed uh, prototype versions of the mHealth platform, and we asked users to interact with it, where we could identify any potential issues or problems, uh, to ultimately deliver an individualized learning and increased interactivity platform for, for use to enhance learning potential. And what I'm showing you here is some screen grabs from, uh, from the M Health platform, M to Here, which included individualized and interactive components. So the first component that was individualized was the opportunity to choose your ear mold coupling. So an open fit shown on the left or a closed ear mold, uh, custom ear mold fit on the right. And this would then tailor the information accordingly to the user's hearing aid. Users then were shown this screen. So there were five high level categories referring to aspects of the patient pathway, such as using hearing aids, getting used to them, looking after them, communication with others, and using phones and other devices with the hearing aid. They could also select uh, from a whole host of videos that they wanted to watch, and the intervention, the uh, mHealth uh, platform tracked what was used, what was watched. And this is showing you an example of a time activity or quiz that was embedded within the resource itself. And again, if you want to scan that QR code, you can take a look at m to here in your own time. Now, critically, we wanted to establish the feasibility of using this intervention, particularly in terms of its delivery, accessibility, usability, and uh, looking at self-reported outcomes in first-time hearing aid users. So to this end, 59 first-time hearing aid users were recruited from the, uh, the clinic in Nottingham, uh, within the Nottingham University Hospitals NHS Trust. And I'm showing you a figure here, uh, the mean ages, gender, the levels of hearing loss and their computer skill level. And generally this is typical uh, of the first time hearing aid user group. In terms of our study design, individuals were first fitted with a hearing aid. 
They completed some baseline questionnaires or some outcome measures. They then went away uh, and used m to hear uh, independently in their own homes for a period of 10 to 12 weeks. They then came back and recompleted uh, the questionnaires that they, that they completed at baseline. So that was our follow up. Now let's have a look at delivery accessibility and usability first of all. So during that 10 to 12 week period, we can see that smartphone technologies were used by the majority of participants in order to access m to hear so a large proportion, 41% even used uh, a tablet, with 36 using a laptop, uh, and a lesser degree individuals using either a smartphone or a desktop computer. Critically, all participants visited uh, m to hear at least once during this time, uh, with 178 total uh, hits we were able to monitor. We found that 65% used m to hear on at least two or more occasions, with over, over half going back continually on three or more occasions, so suggesting repeated use. In addition, usability was rated extremely high by participants, uh, so the measure that we used would have classed it as above average in terms of its usability, and I really thought that that's a testament to the iterative usability testing that we did in the development process. If we look at some outcomes then, we use the hearing handicap inventory for the elderly to look at hearing related quality of life, and we can see here the green, which is the full hearing aid fitting, and then red, 10 to 12 weeks post hearing aid fitting, we can see that this significantly reduced with a large effect size, and this reduction is much larger than we would have expected from just being fitted with hearing aids alone. In addition to hearing aid, uh, hearing related quality of life, self-efficacy or confidence for using hearing aids also significantly improved, improved again with a very large effect size. And finally, if we look at hearing aid knowledge, uh, handling skills and practical handling, handling skills, again we can see here that uh, score significantly improved after use of M to, M to hear, again with a very large effect size. So just to conclude then, uh, what we've shown here is that uh, M Health, which is delivered, uh, M, uh, M to Hear, sorry, which is delivered by mobile technologies, is an effective M Health intervention. So uh, during our feasibility study, we were able to show that it was consistently used on tablets and laptops, suggesting that M, M Health interventions are suitable in first-time hearing aid users and are, cert and are certainly feasible in terms of acceptability. The intervention was also accessed on many different occasions by over two thirds of the sample, suggesting that uh, participants were going back to the m to hear resource in order to self-manage their hearing loss and their hearing aids. Usability was also rated highly, which again I mentioned possibly reflects the user-centered co-production approach taken when we were developing the resource. And our outcome measures also showed a range of benefits of hearing aids plus using m to hear so as I mentioned, the effect sizes were much larger than we would typically see from just being given hearing aids alone. So therefore, we conclude that m may have had additional incremental benefits and certainly demonstrates the power of m health technologies to self-manage hearing loss. Finally, I want to thank all of uh, my colleagues who uh, were involved in, uh, in this research and our funding bodies. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for your attention. If you have any queries or you'd like to access any of the publications that I've cited in today's presentation, then please do email me. Thank you uh, for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of today's event. Bye-bye. Wow, that was a great talk. Um, I'm just going to stop that sharing. So that was that was really good from David. I think, again, 